Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, just a bit of a quick disclaimer that this is going to talk about harm in disability. So guys, completely understand if you don't want to which watch this video. Um, but that being said, let's jump into it. So guys, there is several types of harm that can happen to a person with a disability. Um, there's two distinct types that I wanted to talk to today. But harm is different from abuse. Abuse is a type of harm. But I am talking about more subtle day-to-day -day things that can happen when you're working with the service provider or a support worker. So I've got the video on what is a bad support worker and active and passive support. And this goes back to that video. So pass passive harm is where someone can see that a person is struggling and won't step in and ask them prompting her questions to prevent that harm or neglect from happening and this can be what they call passive support so where someone's not actively offering the help to build those skills it oftentimes it is quite complex because that person might feel that they have the capacity to do the things from themselves. But if they're going to be put at risk of harm, that person has a duty of care, which is actually a legal and moral responsibility, to step in to prevent that harm from happening. Then we have active harm. And active harm is quite heartbreaking. So that is where a service provider, a support worker, or anyone else involved in that person's care is not caring for that person in a proper manner. And so caring for that person in a proper manner is actually defined as giving the person the support that they need to live a life more ordinary that is not a life that needs to have institutional supports around it. I know that's a mouthful, but that's actually taken from the Disability Services Framework. Um, I'll put links in the description below. It'll also be over on the blog, guys. And so active harm is what we're hearing out of the Royal Commission. So things where people have been denied access to family, friends, denied communication, denied meaningful activities, denied access to the open market for work, deny control of their own money. There are some cases where there is frameworks put in place from a positive behaviour support practitioner to be able to facilitate them being able to understand these, but you need to be able to work with a positive behaviour support practitioner to have these restrictive practices in place. So restrictive practices, I'm doing a whole series on I didn't realise the amount of research that's involved, guys. And then you have emotional harm. So that is where a person is subject to emotional or cohesive control to be, have their behaviours to be easier to manage in a support team. So these guys can all be prevented by having a good support team having your support staff that are educated on disabilities, on disability and your disability in general, they know how to support you and you working with them and speaking up if there's anything wrong. I'm not talking about complaining but speaking up and being prepared to put things in writing. Also having a good advocate is really important. So someone that is out of the situation, but knows you and understands you, is it, that can advocate for change on your behalf. This can be the Office of the Public Guardian, the Public Trustee, their more formal routes. It could be your support coordinator. It could be another support worker. It could be family. It could be friends. These are all people that you can go to as well because there will be some support providers who don't actually realize that it's passive harm to prevent information sharing they will use privacy as a reason but 
information sharing is very different to gossip and I'll put that over on the blog of what different privacy and privacy information and gossip what the differences are gossip is actively undermining a support person spreading rumors spreading harm mistruths where spreading information is the information is all on the same page it is publicly available it is understanding it is not adding to the politics that often go on in a support large support organization guys uh, I just wanted to put this video out before Christmas because unfortunately people with disabilities go into respite, they go home to family and friends and if they haven't been visiting those family and friends for a while and there are some things that they bring up, people might not know what they're talking about, how to respond. So the first thing is with any reports of harm, neglect or abuse for anyone, whether any vulnerable adult, believe the person. It's the first step. Believe the person. Second step, don't promise anything that you cannot deliver. Report it as well. Keep the person involved in the process. If you need to report it, tell them what is going to happen. And have written evidence and recorded evidence. So if there is physical harm, such as bruises, broken legs, anything like that take photos and record it um, record it as much as possible to be accurate as much as possible don't ask leading questions just let them tell their own story in their own time as well as getting both sides of the story because if a person has a psychosocial disability um, has difficulty interacting with the world there might be extenuating citizens but again do not blame the person or their disability believe them and work to resolve the situation with education on both sides we can solve this issue guys and guys I will be starting the new media and blog channel in the new year just got some changes in my personal life at the moment and guys, I know this is a really heavy topic, but it's a topic we need to discuss. And I'm doing the series at the moment on ethics in support organisation and the officers as well, and what to expect from officers. And guys, please like, share and subscribe if you like the videos. That then helps me on the journey to monetization as well. And so once I am monetized, I can then have an editor and a researcher so I can go much more in depth with these videos and look at the studio. Guys, please be safe. Happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah and happy holidays.